Hello, this is Ari. It is my distinct pleasure to be today the one interviewing the Wonder Women. So if you were expecting Brittany Frumpovich to be here today, I can tell you that she is. However, she is on the other side of the camera. When Brittany interviewed me a couple of months, weeks ago, for the Wonder Woman series for No Trouble, I said to her, you know, you're asking all these questions and you have such an amazing story yourself. So can I return the favor? Can we turn the tables? And I'm going to be the one interviewing you today. So that's what we're doing. Today's Wonder Woman, proudly featured by No Travel, is none other than Miss Brittany Frumpovich herself. You want to say hello, Brittany? <laughs> hello, everyone. Hello. It is a little odd being on, so to speak, my own column right now in a role other than the interviewer. So thank you, Ari, for turning the tables. This should oh, be my pleasure. How many of those have you done? Oh, my gosh. Um, a handful. I'd say six or seven now. So, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, it's a wonderful series, and maybe we can talk a little bit about how it came about. Uh, before I start, I want to direct the listeners' attention to um, the written interview that you have included already. So you talk about in that interview at length about your performing career, your career as an educator, your adjunct faculty at the University of Mary Washington. You talk about, you know, your teaching career. You have taught at Gerald Weasley's boot camp. You've been a, cl a clinician at MI. You've taught at Adam Needy's music dojo. Uh, you also tell us about what you're practicing, your experiences as a female musician, your interest in luthiery, the history of this series, Wonder Woman. So maybe we will get into that a little bit as we talk as well. Uh, you told us about performers you'd like to collaborate with and many other really interesting things. Also, very interesting angle about when you run a music school, how to support the teachers at that music school. I thought that was very interesting. So I definitely want you all to take a, a read through, through that written interview because it's very, very insightful about Brittany. But we are here today because I want to dig a little bit deeper on my friend and colleague and uh, just want to introduce you all to the Wonder Woman who Brittany Frumpovich is. Uh, Brittany, to just pick up on something that recently happened, you just got nominated for the Music Educator Award called Whammy. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what that is and what it means to you to be one of the finalists? Wow. Yes, so that is the Washington Area Music Awards. Um, they've been going on for a very long time. I know when I moved here, uh, Yeah, because I'm originally from Philadelphia. It was a it was a big deal uh, to be nominated for a Whammy Award. You didn't even have to win one. You know, and people put that very proudly on their resumes. Um, this is my second year. Uh, I've been nominated and made it to the finalist category. But it's kind of interesting from being like a younger musician and seeing that now to being older, uh, like all of us. Um, And and being nominated, it's it's kind of interesting because you at this at this side of things, you look at it and you see all the people who are in there. Uh, I don't want to say competing with it; it just feels kind of weird. But um, have also been recognized for their achievements. And you know, last year I watched, and there were so many people I knew that I was like, man, I hope they win. Like mm -hmm. it almost didn't. Like even this year, like I'm looking at some of the people I know, some of the people in that category. And it almost, I don't want to say like it doesn't matter, but there's so much talent that I don't mind not winning. I feel like I'm already have made an achievement just getting nominated because there's so many fine people doing good work. You it's it's if I was a judge, I'd really have a hard time. <laughs> I know how they I know how they do the scoring. I know how they, they pick a winner. But at the same point, there's so many talented and, and superb people in the competition i've watched twice now and every single time i find myself rooting for like like half the playing field you know what determines if you're a good educator or not um so what they're going to do is uh as i understand in this next category is they have a panel of uh industry Uh, professionals who come in and they basically score you. I don't know what the criteria is for the score, but basically they look at, you know, 
how what impacts you've had on the region and how involved you are in the industry and things like that. And they basically just kind of score you and the highest scoring person will get the whammy award. So, mm-hmm. but I mean, like I said, there's so many really incredible people in it. And one of the, one of the people is Skip Chables and he does uh, music for life up in Washington, DC. And I know very early on, we used to help with benefit concerts for that program. Like my students would do shows and, uh, and we donate, towards that program building Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i mean it's like very it's very almost personal you know you know a lot of the people are competing and you know that that they're they're doing excellent work so it's it sounds like you have a tight-knit community of educators in that area that sounds lovely (laughs) yeah it is i mean everyone's busy and, and and just like everywhere else but uh you know yeah we we know each other so we tend to Uh, Brittany, July 14th was a <laughs> fateful day in your life. It involved a wasp, a bike, a head trauma, SOS on Facebook. Uh, you wrote a blog post about it. you want to briefly tell us what happened and what transpired since then? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make a long story short. I'm not good at that, but I'll try. Um, so July 14th, I... You know, I, I woke up. It was a great day. I practiced. All the all the things were going off right. And uh, I fell during a workout, and I fractured my wrist, my distal radius. Um, I had some really good friends who stayed on the on a, a, basically a Facebook Messenger chat with me. Cause you, were, you were about to pass out, right? You had a head trauma. It, so it was going into shock. I knew I was going into shock, but I didn't know – how bad it was. Um, and I, I don't know. I don't know if it was like just part of my brain in denial or what it was. Cause sometimes you're just kind of assessing things that you're not really sure. You kind of, I was kind of in a headspace where I wanted to wait long enough. I could see how bad things were. just kind of relax a little bit and assess it for myself before making the call. But I also was aware because I'd hit my head that it passing out was a real possibility. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got on the phone with a couple of people and, uh, One of my friends and I, you know, after a little bit, just letting me like breathe and okay, okay. You know, like, you know, looked at my head, I took the ice pack off, and he's like, "How's that wrist?" And I popped that off, and I was like, "Oh, you know." We both kind of like blanched. She's like, "You got to get to the patient first, like now, like stat." Mm-hmm. So he he took care of making the phone call. Shout out to my friend Ben Titus, taking care of me all the way from Wisconsin, and uh, he got some local folks to help me out. They got me a patient first. Um, that 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 should have been enough for a day, right? Yeah, yeah, plenty. <laughs> um, yeah, it's plenty. <laughs> you know, they put in a, in the temporary cast and all that. Sent me home, gave me the sedative shot, and uh, Ben was kind enough. Uh, he has access because he's done some performances for my students. He had access to the Facebook page where I talk to my students. It's a private group, so he even took care of canceling lessons for me. Like he was just on it. Yeah, that's a good friend. Um, So I went home. You know, my ride got me in the front door, tucked me on the sofa, and I was out because they gave me a sedative shot. I woke up a couple hours later, and we had a microburst. And the microburst uh, kind of basically just tore the tree apart in the neighbor's yard. And The microburst is like a storm, like a specific kind of storm that you guys It's it's a very severe storm. The effects can look like a tornado. Um, So... Our, our whole area got hit pretty bad. I was driving the other day, and there's still houses that have tarps on their roofs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, straight line winds, very high speeds. Um, and basically, it picked up about a good sunk chunk, about a third of the tree uh, from the house next door, and threw it, it through power lines down on my van and onto my house. I also had trees go down in the back, which blocked Uh, all my egress is out of my house. <laughs> you were essentially stuck. Stuck, no power, and the drays are about 100 degrees at that point. I remember when I read that Facebook post, you, you described the moment where you were kind of sort of sedative, the sedatives had still been doing their thing, and you were kind of waking up, and you're thinking, gosh, I got to move the van, and up down comes the tree, right? Yeah, it's, it's, I kind of did the short version there, but that's more or less it. I, I had a, about enough time to get off the couch 
realized I still felt really drugged. Um, the only thing that woke me up was the emergency alerts going off on my phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, some kind of alert, some kind of buzzing or alert, but I think it was an emergency alert. And then I got outside, got there was a teaching tent I was using at that point because of COVID out front. And uh, I got the top off the teaching tent with one arm uh, because I knew that that was going to go flying. It yeah. Was go down the street or into a neighbor's house or into a window. Yeah. I had a Pigtronics pedal that was going out to get fixed and a package on the front porch. The mail lady had just pulled up to get it. And uh, I, I grabbed it with one arm, threw it into the house, onto the sofa I saw her uh, put her blinkers on and slam her doors. She's like, I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> that was giving me a hint because I was just so focused on like stuff. And I got in, I was still feeling woozy. Mm-hmm. And I looked at the tree and I looked at the van and it was like, you just had this instinctual sense. Yeah. Uh, I'd been moving that van for about a year, year and a half because that tree was a risk. And it, I could feel it like inside, like a window of, of opportunity just closed. You could just see it. The sky just just turned so fast. And I just signed off on it. It was like, I'm so sorry. You're on your own. And I know it's just a car, but that car is taking care of me. I've outrun it, tornadoes in it and other things on gigs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, like it was just seconds later. It, it was down. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, you found yourself you know, once things calmed down and you were sort of assessing the damage, but you found yourself unable to play, not knowing what your wrist was going to do. Would you ever be able to play again? And you a little bit documented your whole journey through that absolutely horrific, you know, chain of events. And what really struck me, you just have an amazing, like, power and drive. And so I know you fixed your car yourself which was supposed to be totaled, and you fixed that. Kind of. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm, I mean, I'm very curious about where, where did you get the strength from to keep practicing, keep playing, and what did you do? Because I know we all know people who are unable to play for injury reasons or sickness. Where, where was your headspace at that enabled you to keep going? Hmm. Well, I mean... When anybody's in a bad situation, how can I describe it? I mean, you really don't have a choice. You know, there's only there's a saying in a country song. I don't remember the title, but, you know, if you want to get out of hell, you just keep walking through till you're out of hell. You know, you keep walking through to the other side. I'm quoting it very badly there. My apologies mm-hmm. to the artist. But, um, you know, yeah, you just, you know, I was like, all right. You know, we're going to go to bed tonight and then tomorrow we're going to do the next logical steps to get back to where we want to be or get out of this or fix this. Or I'm, I'm a kind of a strategist. I, I kind of always look to the next domino that has to fall to enable the steps after that follow. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just my personality. It's nothing good or bad. It just is the wiring. I'm usually looking for the next domino I have to topple. Um, so I don't know if it's strength, really, per se. I think there's stubbornness. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a, uh, sometimes a refusal to accept a no. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way, like a hurting people boundaries way. I mean that in a, yeah, yeah. you know, when life shows up and, and everyone around you is going, this is improbable. I'm the one who's going to be like, is it though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's take a look again. What are our options? <laughs> I think that's kind of just the wiring. Yeah. For your wrists, you want to tell us a little bit about what you have worked on, what the prognosis is, where you're at? Yeah. So for anybody who doesn't know, um, uh It should have been a normal wrist break, but a lot of things about that day probably were supposed to be a little more normal than they were. Um, for whatever reason, I developed a syndrome called chronic regional pain syndrome, and that is like having a a nervous system or or nerves that are still 
angry and agitated beyond where your body's actually physically at. So in other words, the bone is healed, the break is healed, um, but your nervous system is still throwing trouble codes to liken it to a vehicle per se, um, where that your body thinks something's still wrong. So you have burning pain, you have swelling, you have the muscles atrophying, um, you have a lot of things that aren't consistent with where your body is actually at for real because your nervous system is getting the wrong message to your brain. So um, where I'm at now today, uh, I've started seeing a chiropractor in addition to everything else I was doing. Uh, they wanted to do and, and still want to do a stellate ganglion block, which is fine. I'm not opposed to it. I'm just leaving it on the buffet of options uh, for the moment. They also want to do steroid shots to my hand. Um, I just looked at side effects for the stellar ganglion block, and I thought, you know what, let's try a few other things first. What is that? So, is that a surgical procedure? Um, they would basically uh, block some of the nerve sensitivity in my arm. The hope is it would unlock my wrist. So they usually have to go in and, and do, as I understand from what I have researched, an injection through your neck because they go into the nerve bundle that goes down your arm. Um, it had some potential side effects. I, I, I wasn't quite prepared to risk at this point. Um, it's not saying it shouldn't be done or should be done. It just, you know, I just read about it and was like, eh, let's try some other things. So uh, there's a chiropractor in Richmond who's a former student, uh, uh, really talented double bassist and electric bassist. And he gets artists. He works with a lot of artists. So and he works on people with chronic regional pain syndrome. So I've been seeing him in addition to doing uh, physical therapy and things like that. Uh so what usually happens with this, I'll take this off. This is a compression sleeve that keeps swelling down. Mm -hmm. I wear it a lot. So this is my hand. Um, move this real quick just so I can see what you folks are seeing. It's a little bit delayed. There we go. So here's my two hands. And this one does all the things. That doesn't hurt. I'm going to try to bend this one. <laughs> Oh <laughs> and I'm I'm straining right now to get it to do a back bend. It can't do it. Yeah. So, so it's just locked up, cramped. It's, up. it's locked up. It's is this with a a suspected muscle contracture. That's what they're trying to do. Uh, that's what they're trying to treat. Uh, a couple things have come out of the chiropractic treatments that have been really good, and I'm not, you know. Uh, I don't want to say I'm it's worked for me. This may not be for everybody. That would be my disclaimer. Um, I'm not saying, you know, it's for everybody. And I'm not saying it's not for people. It, I just know it's worked for me. Uh, we've gotten the nerves to be much less on fire. I don't have a, a high pain. Uh, I, I would say my pain on a level out of like a a one to 10 could vary on a day from like a four to a six. Uh, some people get like a, a feeling like fire in the limb. Uh, I'd have a lot of swelling that was just like, Oh, well, just felt like being swollen today. Okay. Well, I'll put this back on, you know, uh, that it would feel random. You know, it was usually reacting in some way, sometimes because of even just cold weather. Um, so with that being done, with the, with the treatments kind of getting the pain under control, uh, it's been easier for everybody involved in the treatment to go after the muscle contracture. I should say suspected muscle contracture and see if we can get it to open up just with, uh, you know, non less invasive techniques, you know, just regular OT work and, and uh, working on the nerve bundle itself. So that's that's where it's at, which is actually a really good turn of events. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not playing my six or my five string. Um, I I got a four string, the one behind me, the, the coda on the wall. I found it used, thank God, because, you know, I haven't been working like I've been. 
and I've been able to to play really for the first time in a while, sounding respectively like you know, oh, this person could possibly go back to work again. That's been nice. How did you approach practicing in the beginning after this happened? <laughs> uh, baby steps. <laughs> uh, you know, all the stuff that works. You know, you're an educator. All the stuff that works for beginners. Um, I think that maybe they don't sometimes understand that those are like lifelong things we're teaching. The permutations, um, scales, arpeggios. Um, in the beginning. I couldn't get my hand to open up enough. These, these, in the very beginning, by the way, these digits were locked up on this end. Yeah, so I, I couldn't even really get my hand around the neck of a bass. So sometimes I would just sit with my hand over the neck, and I took. Uh, this is hilarious to say. I took the seven string bass and tuned it like a guitar with a low B string, and I would just do very slowly little Spanish guitar studies from classical music. It was more the right hand doing anything with these guys, just trying to moving and using some of the strings as a uh, open drones. Excuse me, strings as open drones, mm -hmm. um, and just slowly playing through some classical pieces like that. Just open, you know classical guitar pieces um but yeah a lot of permutations arpeggios uh tried tapping permutations uh, as well that's you know and you have and john ferrer shout out to john ferrer this was a conversation i had with him a long time ago where he gave me this tip when we we're talking about it um and it came in handy for this so you know just sitting and, and tapping you know take these two fingers on a chord and then these two fingers and then rotate the fingers and then rotate the fingers that are doing the tapping and then try to do full rotations. So, you know, get the thumb in there, too. So there's there are some things one can work on percussive sounds in the right hand, you know, the thumb in this hand. So there there were things It just, you know, wasn't maybe the necessary the whole menu of options I'd normally be practicing. Did you find that those limitations stirred you creatively into ways that you might usually not have gone to? Hmm. I think hmm. looking that way, it's snowing, so it's really pretty <laughs> bad. So sometimes it's nice to just stare at the snow and get your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to pull a Keanu Reeves either. Um, no, yeah, because he's answering his questions like that all the time. Um, let's see. I think there was a quote. I don't remember who said it, but it was during the pandemic. And uh, I remember it was Gerald Beasley or Victor. It was someone just wise like that. I do remember that. And I hope I, I'm not going to attribute it to the wrong person. But they said, um, sometimes it's just best to be quiet. So on that note, I know a lot of other people kind of, didn't gig and didn't do a lot during the pandemic or they live stream. But um, I ended up finding it, I was teaching a lot. It got even more critical for the people that I was serving. And I'm sure you found the same thing, you know, it helped them with connectivity and, and their own mental health in a lot of cases. I think my creative creativity just did different things, but there was a sense for a while that, that, sometimes it's okay to just be quiet mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and that stillness was a, I think at first a bit welcome because <laughs> there's a lot to do um, creativity doesn't always have to come out as a as an instrument though or as a as a as making music and I think that's probably uh, a strength with me and a lot of other creatives and and also a weakness because we look unfocused, but it just means that that energy is going to take a different conduit out of your body and out of your mind. So um, probably there was just it just manifested in other ways for a little while. I read that you made some modifications on your gear, like came up with certain ways of putting a strap or using short scales or the seven string. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, um, I don't have them quite handy, but uh, what I did do with with the help, my mom's a, a basically a, a bit of a sorceress with a needle and thread. Mm -hmm. So, and having one really good hand um, 
I, I paid them a visit at one point and uh, brought a couple of straps with me and uh, some Velcro and said, hey, I could use some help with the project. Can we make a, a harness which would swing my regular bases into position like a Chapman stick because my wrist only goes this way now? So, yeah, we have that uh, sitting. Uh, it's actually over here. It's off a of base right now. Um, probably take a little bit too long to get it all hooked back up. Um, I think that exploration is still going on. Uh, so that worked kind of well, still a little awkward. It'd be great to play like this again, but, uh, you know, I'd have to like anything else, like any of these options I'm, I'm playing with and exploring. It's one of those things you have to practice and settle in and see what the potential is. Mm -hmm. So that is on the table if needed. Um, short scale, that was, just I kind of was getting frustrated teaching and not being able to play my ideas. <laughs> so um, I had a couple students who were playing these uh, Fender Jaguar short scale basses. Um, one of them I had purchased for a student and, and, and fixed it up for them and then kind of handed it off. But it, it got to live with me for a couple of days. And I, I was like, I wonder, I wonder. I walked into the one music store uh, that I, I do some lessons through, and there was one hanging on the wall. I was like, oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so that was, the, yeah, that was a fortuitous, you know, just good time, good timing all the way around. Um, so it followed me home. Uh, that, if I've kind of moved back to like 34 inch scale, uh, so that one might end up being a piccolo bass. We'll see. I've always kind of wanted to experiment with that. So, <laughs> what can you pass on to others who are struggling with injury? Move. Try to avoid it in the first place. That's the obvious. Um, <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't laugh. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess I could pass on this, I and mean, maybe it's not helpful. Maybe it is. Uh, you know, it's really – I get people who are saying, like, oh, you know, you had the worst day, you know, or, oh, your luck's been terrible. And I'm like, no, my luck was great. Mm -hmm. If I didn't break my wrist, I would have been dead. Yeah. I would have gone out. I would have moved that van. I know what my front yard looked like. There was no exit from that tree. There was no area of my front yard that did not get covered by tree. So, you know, I mean, I think people kind of expected I'd be a little bit more depressed or a little more sad, but I actually kind of wake up and go, you know, if I have to live with a broken wrist, I, I, that's fine. I, I got to live because most other yeah, I kind of thought it through many times and, and most of the other ways that day would have played out. I don't think I would have gotten out of it. it, it, it you know, I could have broken something worse to be in the ground by now. So in my personal case, it's perspective of knowing that this is bad, but it's not as bad as it probably could have been. And once you kind of could shift that perspective, it makes it all easier. You just kind of go, okay, well, I have this this gift in a way, you know, what do we do to make the most of it? Wow. And, and people saw the tree and saw that house. And, and once they kind of they are like, oh, yeah, you definitely would have been, you know, not with us anymore. Well, you would have been out in the exactly at that moment moving the van, right? Because of the rest, you kind of. No, yeah, yeah, it delayed me enough, um, you know, it, you know, and maybe and it, there's other ways you could think about it, I suppose, like, you know, well, you wouldn't have been conked out in the sofa or, or half a dozen other things. But, you know, it slowed me down enough that <laughs> I didn't feel a need to insert myself in the situation. <laughs> but, you know, as far as just trying to actual actually deal with your injury or your problems i mean it's kind of an interesting there's been other musicians who have mentioned 
situations or problems they've overcome or things that they've kept close that you know maybe we don't know as, as general public. Everybody's got something, hmm. even if it's not showing on the surface. You know, um, everybody's got something that they're dealing with. I mean, older bass players, real common injuries, they don't have cartilage in some of their fingers anymore. Mm. You know, it's, it's just about being creative and finding a workaround and using what you have. You know. Thanks for that. Yeah. Brittany, you are incredibly handy. I know that you make beautiful <laughs> jewelry on Etsy. So please sit so we can see your beautiful <laughs> hangout, one of which I also have and love. Um, and you make jewelry, you mod and build guitars, you fix your car. Uh, <laughs> how did this handiness come about and this interest in fixing things? Uh, yeah, I, I blame a couple of people. Um, uh, oh gosh, I gotta run this. It's like a, a short list, but it's, it's good stories. Um, As far as it pertaining to instruments and music, uh, my one of my best friends in high school, uh, Chris Barrow, um, we just kind of formed our, our first tribe. We, we both loved Van Halen and that whole DIY aspect of Eddie, the, the mildly mad scientist, you know, hack a guitar apart to figure out how to do this or that or get the guitar he wanted to not be happy with just what was you know, available and, and to mod the crap out of everything. I mean, we just fully, you know, that just made sense to both of us. Um, so I think that was like a, a definitely a, a, how shall I say, a guiding star in, a, in the compass for both of us. And then, you know, we just kind of supported each other in, in that kind of same mad scientist. <laughs> we still text each other. He's like, building guitars and I could see what's on his workbench and I'm texting him pictures of pedal boards and things I'm working on. So that, that hasn't stopped even though we're in different States now. I think before that, my parents though, um, you know, and that's usually where we get a lot of our first, you know, we model what we see and, you know, um, I, they weren't rich, you know, we weren't exactly, you know, super flush. Um, but they made up for it with a lot of creativity in creating. Um, so my dad's a super talented engineer. Um, they kind of encompassed that if you put your mind to it, you know, you don't have to be the best at it, but you're, you can do a lot more than you think you could. So he would constantly be teaching himself a new set of skills that were completely outside you know, maybe what work expected, you know, and same with mom. She just kind of, okay, well, I don't know how to do this, but let me try it. Who says I can't, you know. You have been doing a lot of writing about uh, other bass players, particular female uh, bass players lately and interviewed other artists. Uh, has that in any way changed your own playing or your perspective on music? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually been great. Um, <laughs> being around everybody I've been interviewing, I've learned something and, and it's always impacted me for the better. I, I feel extra fortunate to be doing the series just because I learn so much about everyone I'm interviewing. And then it always gives me something to kind of pause and think about with my own playing or how I'm approaching things. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I get to talk to all you guys and, and, <clears throat> And, and learn something from all of you and, and then grow. And, and then, of course, that relationship there, you know, with everyone. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a good place to be. Um, you are a solo bass artist. And um, I know you, we, we share some common inspirations, like such as Steve Lawson, for example. I know I read and I know you're also very much a fan of Michael Mannerings. Uh, what do you see your solo bass career going? What are your plans? Where are you at with that? Where am I at with that? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I 
don't know right now. And I'm not saying it like uh, just kind of waiting to see, get this work through. There are some things I'd hope to do right before uh, this got wrecked up. If I could pick up right where I was, there's some stuff I was recording. I'd hope to do it as um, NS had just released the CR6 right over there. Hello. <laughs> it's the beautiful base. Um, I was hoping to record and, and shoot that their way to use as, as some promo for the release of that base. Um, it's going to get my hands kind of to back on that party or figure out another way to do it. Um yeah, I'd, I'd say probably the plan is just to get back to doing it. So, <laughs> um, where can people find you? Ah, okay. Uh, www.ladybassmusic.net. That's a good place to go. You can find everything else from there. Uh, Instagram, everything's ladybass. Or sorry, ladybass music. There's no dot there. Just ladybass music. It'd be like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. So just just search for that. And people can contact you there for lessons as well. Right? Oh, yep. Yep. That's Anything nice. else you want to tell us? What else I want to tell you? Mm. Everyone be well. Be well. I know that's big. Be well. Appreciate everything. Um, yeah, it's it's a little bit macabre, but, you know, with with. I have, I have a lot of I know a lot of people around me who are dealing with COVID right now or or uh, the effects of it, everything from loved ones going to the hospital to loved ones not coming out of the hospital. Um, I think we're all going through that and uh, we know people are dealing dealing with that situation. So, you know, just, you know. Appreciate the small things. They mean more than you might realize because oftentimes it's a very ordinary day when things go sideways. And a lot of people sometimes don't even get to kind of complete what they thought was an ordinary day. So. Well, I, on a personal note, I really want to say thank you to you because you are you have been documenting your journey and documenting how this has all been for you. And, and you know, it was just as you say, you had no choice, so you had to. But. It definitely made me pay attention. So, no. Oh, so, thanks. Thank you thanks. For, you know, I I, I, there. I do want to say actually, there's this one final thought that I do need to include. I I have a lot of thank yous. Um, a lot of people came in and helped out on that GoFundMe. I did not expect that. It was not planned. Uh, ben Titus stepped up and surprised me with that. But I was all of us uh, who saw that go down were even more collectively surprised at just how the response so i would be remiss if i did not thank folks for jumping in and, and helping out so i appreciate it my vehicle's back together as a result of that and that's part of the reason for the post too because i feel like i didn't realize there was that many people who would care um i was actually anti having to go fund me for a while because we are in a pandemic and people are struggling and uh, Ben just kind of took the reins, so um, and he ran with it. And then the, the response, like I said, was so overwhelming. So I've been public. If people have gotten inspiration out of that, that's awesome. But I also felt it was good to have that accountability and tell people how how that support was being used. So I didn't. I didn't it was a responsibility I did not want to take lightly. So thank you for everything for that. Well, I see you as somebody who gives a lot to the base community, so if we can have your back when you need it, then that's what that's for, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anything else you wanna you wanna say? And then Good. Can we to just do a final closing. Yeah. Um. You know, Ari, thank you for for this. I did not expect it either. Um. So, like I said, it's kind of fun having the tables turn. And thanks for everybody for checking out uh, Wonder Women stories from the women who play bass. Uh, this has been a pleasure to, uh, uh, I guess, be the, the ringmaster for that. <laughs> <laughs> I should also say you're doing all the heavy lifting, right? So I don't want to take credit for that, but putting these things out is a lot of editing and all of that. And you're doing all of that, so it was really easy for me. Okay, it's still getting really a pleasure. <laughs> all right, still getting the byline. It was your idea. So <laughs> <laughs> let's 
Um, if you think about it, um, yeah, I, I do want to say we do have a little PR here. I take my moment. You have Wonder Women <laughs> shirts. I love mine. It's beautiful. They're over on the Etsy store. And we've also got ones that are just a logo on the front, like the one I'm wearing right now. Um, and the, uh, the uh, graphic on the back. So check those out. So Excellent. Thank you, Brittany Frampovich. Thank you, Ari. We'll talk soon. Thanks. Okay. <laughs>